In this video, we'll be making a simple game where our player has to try and avoid falling objects for as long as possible, like this crab avoiding these perfectly round rocks. We'll include a retry button on the game over screen and a time of how long they lasted. So we'll be doing platform setup, player movement, falling objects, game over screen, and then add some simple animations to our player. And then we'll have a game. First off, we'll open Unity Hub and create a new 2D project and name it Falling Objects. I'm going to move my windows around just so we can see everything we need at once. This is just how I like it set up. Now right click in the hierarchy and go 2D object sprites square and I'm going to name this platform and this will be the stage for our player to stand on. Drag out the sides to fill the camera and now we'll add a new component in the inspector and we'll add a polygon collider 2D. Click on Edit Collider and you'll see this green box appear around our platform in the scene. You can drag the sides up and then pinch the middle to make these invisible collision walls which will keep our player from falling off. Now again right click and go 2D Object Sprite Square and this one will be for our player. Now we'll add a Box Collider 2D so we can check what our player is touching and a rigid body 2D to give our player gravity and mass. Scroll down in the rigid body and under constraints, tick the freeze Z rotation so we don't spin. Now let's add a script to control our player named player controller. And double click on this script to open it up. In our code, we'll want to add two float variables, one for horizontal input and one for movement speed. We'll default the speed to 10f. We'll also need our rigid body 2D, which we'll take and initialize in our start function by calling get component and then passing in rigid body 2D. Cool. Now down in our update method, we'll set our horizontal input to equal input.get access and pass in horizontal. And just to show you quickly, this input horizontal is set up in Edit Project Settings Input Manager. And if you open horizontal here, you'll see that we can move using left, right, A or D, or uh, the controller's joystick. Okay, back in the script, we'll add a fixed update method where we'll make our player move by setting its rigid body's velocity. And we'll set this to be a new vector 2, which we'll pass in our horizontal input uh, and times that by our movement speed and then pass our rigid body's y velocity. And that's it. That's all you need to get him moving left and right. Easy as that. Oh, look at him go. Next, we'll right click and go 2D object sprites and select circle. And we'll make this our falling object. So we'll make this first in our scene and then turn it into a prefab so we can reuse it over and over. And while I'm naming this, I'll rename our square to be player as well. So let's add a rigid body 2D so our object has gravity and can fall. And then we'll add a circle collider 2D so we know when it touches us. Click on our falling object in the hierarchy and drag it over to our assets and this will make it a prefab. Then you can delete the one in the scene. Now we have our falling object prefab, we'll write a script that'll drop our objects. So right click in assets and make a new C sharp script and I'll name this object fall controller. Now open our script and add a float called weight and default this to 0.1f and a public game object for our falling object called falling object. Now we can delete our update and replace it with our own void function called fall. In here we'll type instantiate and pass in our falling object and then a new vector free. We'll put in a random dot range between minus 10 and 10, which will randomize where our objects are dropped and another 10 in the Y, which will drop it above our camera view and then set our rotation. Now in our start, we'll call this function and make it keep repeating by using invoke repeating. So pass in fall and our weight float and our weight float again. The weight is the time between dropping the objects. Now we'll select our main camera and drag in our new script. Then in the falling object slot, we'll drag in our object prefab. So now our objects drop, but we don't want them to stick around. So let's add a new script to our falling object called 
falling object. In here, we want to call the on collision enter 2D, and inside there, write destroy this dot game object. Nice. Now, when our player is hit, we want them to also be destroyed. First, let's add a new tag to our falling object so we know when it's an object that's touching our player. So we'll add a new tag called object. Then go back to our prefab and in the tag drop down, select object. Back in our player controller script, we'll add our own on collision 2D and check for our object tag. So go if collision.gameObject.compare tag is object. Then destroy this dot game object. Now when our player gets hit, they disappear. Let's add a game over screen. In our hierarchy, right click and go UI, then text and import the essentials. I'll speed through me designing this, but basically just writing game over and making it big enough for us to read. Then again, we'll add another text object, right click UI text, and this time it will be our timer text. So this will say you lasted and then how long the player lasted. And finally, we'll add a retry button. So right click UI and then button. Cool, so now we'll want a controller to tie all our elements together. So right click and go create empty and name this game controller. Then we'll add a new script called game controller. Inside our controller, we'll add two public variables, one for our canvas and one for our timer text. Our text is of TMP underscore text, which you'll need to import. So hover over the red line to import it easily. Now in our start, we'll check if our canvas is active and if it is, we'll set it to not be. So set active to false. Then we'll replace our update with a public void function called retry click. And in here we'll make our scene reload and therefore our game reset. So type scene manager dot load scene and pass in scene manager dot get active scene dot name. Now we want to add a function for showing our game over when the player dies. So void when player dies. But how will our controller know? Well, we're going to use the observer or listener pattern. Very fancy stuff. So back in our player controller, we're gonna add a public event action and call this player died. This is what our game controller will subscribe to or listen to, uh, to know when our player dies. Now down where our player is destroyed, we'll type player died invoked. And this is when we'll notify any listeners of this event that our player has died. Back in our game controller, we'll add a serialized field for private player controller, player controller. And then we'll replace our start function with an awake function. So move the start code over. And in here, we'll check if our player controller is not null then we'll add player controller dot player died plus equals when player dies. Uh, so this is where we subscribe to this event. And when it happens, we're going to call when player dies function. Now copy this code down to our when player dies function and change the plus to a minus. And this unsubscribes us from this event. Now let's set our canvas dot game object dot set active to be true. And then we'll set our timer text dot text to equal you lasted plus the time dot time since level load. Alone like this, it'll post a long number like this. So instead, let's add a math dot round and set it to be two decimal places. 
Back in Unity, select the game controller and fill in your variable slots. So drag over our player to the player controller, our canvas to the canvas slot, and our timer text to the timer text slot. Now click on our button and scroll down and click the plus on on click. Drag in our game controller and in the drop down, go to game controller and retry clicked. Now when our player gets hit, we get a game over screen with our time and a retry button. So that is the full game mechanics done. Next I'm going to make it prettier with some animation so you can stick around if you're interested in that. First I'll change our colours and then I'll just use this crab sprite sheet by Elfen. Elfen. Drag it into our assets and set up the sprites. I have a longer video on animations I can link below for you to follow along if this is a bit too fast. But setup is sprite mode multiple, pixels per unit is one less than your sprite actually is so there's no tearing, point mode is point no filter and then compression is none. We click apply then we go sprite editor, we slice it and dice it, we go grid by cell size, we do 16, oh no 32 by 16 uh, since this is a wide boy we click slice and you can see it's cut out and then we click apply. You can see our sprites are all on the side there. We're just going to add our animation window in window animation animation. Uh, you click on your player then click create. We'll name this idle and I'm just creating an animations folder. And then what you do basically is drag in your frames, spread it out so that it runs slower and then you just test and make sure it's how you like it. Um, we'll make a walking animation, same fin, same thing, <laughs> drag in the sprites. I'm trying to talk too fast now. Um, <laughs> make sure it looks good, cool, looks great. And now we're going to add a animator window and we're going to set up our blend trees. First off, we're going to go into parameters and click the plus and click float and then add X velocity. And that's all we're going to need. Then right click, do create state and from new blend tree. I'm going to name this movement. Then we go inside, add two motion fields. Then we go inside our animations folder and drag in idle and walk into these motion fields. You can see we've got the X velocity parameter selected. We go back into our base layer and delete walk and idle and that'll make our movement the default. Now in our player controller script we're going to need an animator variable which we set up the same way as our rigid body in the start menu like this. Now down in our fixed update we'll type animator.setfloat and inside call X velocity then pass in math.abs rb.velocity.x. We're also going to make a void flip sprite function where we're going to say if our horizontal input is less than zero or our horizontal input is greater than zero, we'll have a vector free for our local scale, which is our transform.local scale. Our local scale x is going to be times by minus one to make it negative, and then our local scale is our local scale. Then we call flip sprite up in update. And I forgot we also need a bool for is facing right. We'll set this by default to true. And then check that in our flip sprite. Either is it true or is it false. And we need to set that to what it's currently not in our function. So is facing right will equal not is facing right, which will basically flip the ball. I'm just going to make the rocks a bit darker so we can see them better. And now when we test it out, we can see our little guy skilling, skilling, scuttling. <laughs> so yeah, our game's all done. We got a crab. He runs away from the rocks. And when he gets hit, oh, I'm doing too good. No, no. Well, when he gets hit, come on. Oh, I'm amazing. This game's too easy. Who made this? Oh, you can find the source code for this game and everything else I've ever made on my Patreon. That's a good deal.